Hi guys, this section is about cost management. So, you know, you might imagine that it's going to fit very much into the billing and pricing. But as I mentioned before, you know, cost is associated with all sorts of different resources. So, you know, it's going to fall into the technology domain as well, where we need to understand the various cost drivers associated with different services. So let's head over to the questions and let's click start. So question number one asks, how can a company separate costs for storage, EC2, S3 and other services by department? So you might, for instance, need to work out which department is using the most of your budget. So how can you do that? Well, do you add department specific tags to each resource? Well, that sounds like a good option to me because if you add a tag to the resource, then, you know, that's some metadata and that might say this resource was created by this department. And so if you do that, you're then able to sort of then run reports and, and work out how much that department or any, any resource using that particular tag has used. And that correlates back to the department then. So I like that option. Create a separate VPC for each department. Well, that doesn't really separate billing anyway, um, and it would add to complexity. Create a separate AWS account for each department. Well, if you did that, you definitely get a separate bill, but it sounds like a bit of an overkill. Um, you know, it's gonna add more complexity than you might need. Can you use organizations, AWS organizations? Well, you can use that for consolidated billing across accounts, so that would be useful. But for this specific use case, I would go with department-specific tags. So let's just check that one out. And that's definitely the right answer. And you can see here in the explanation that we've assigned, or AWS in this case, have assigned specific tags and they've got cost center attributes and so on. So that would tell you, you know, which cost center to actually attribute those costs to. Now you can do something called cost allocation tags. That means you have to enable cost allocation tags in AWS billing. And you can then assign, you know, these cost centers and whatever other attributes using tags. So that enables you to then track your costs at a very detailed level. And you can organize your resources based on the cost allocation report. So moving on to question two, which Amazon EC2 pricing model is the most cost effective for an always up right size database server running a project that will last one year? Right. So you've got to look at some of the key attributes of this question here. So firstly, we want cost effective, of course, it's going to be always on and it's the right size. So that means, you know, you're not expecting that during that first year, you're going to find that you need to change the instance type. So it's going to last one year as well. So those should all be great clues to push you towards reserved instances, because remember reserved instance gives you a great discount. You've got to commit to a one or three year period so we can do one year here. And there are two options presented in the answers here. We've got convertible or standard. Now the key thing that should push you towards standard is that this right sized. So this server is right size. That means we know exactly how much CPU, RAM, storage it needs. So we're going to choose an instance type. We're going to create a reserved instance based on that instance type, and it's not going to change for that year. Now we might pay a little bit more if we think that it's going to change. You know, we might realize that, you know, a few months down the line or expecting that a few months down the line, once we've gathered more data, we might need to change the instance type. Then you would go for the convertible. In this case, standard sounds better. On demand won't give you any discount, so it's not cost effective. And spot is not something for an always up server that's going to last a year, you know, because it's going to get shut down at some point when AWS need capacity back. So let's just check that answer. And that is the correct answer. So let's just have a quick look at the differences between standard and convertible RIs. So here's a table, it gives you a bit of information. You know, you've got the standard and the convertible. What can you do with a convertible? Well, can you change the availability zone, instance type and so on? You can do that for standard. Um, and you can also do that for convertible, slightly different the way you do it. But with the standard, you can't change instance families, operating system, tenancy or payment option. And it says here you also benefit from price reductions with the convertible, but you're going to pay a bit more for that. So, you know, you get slightly less discount. 
So moving on, we have another question here. Which AWS service should be used to create a billing alarm? So you want to create an alarm that goes off when you know you reach a certain amount of spend so that you you know you can modify your resources, shut things down if you need to, you know, to make sure you don't spend too much. And we've done that in the labs in my courses a lot, you know, to make sure my students don't end up spending too much money or any at all for that matter. So the options here that stand out to me straight away are CloudWatch because CloudWatch, as we know, is a service that you can use to, um, it receives metrics and you can create alarms to alert based on those metrics. Now, one of the metrics that I know that it can alert on is billing metrics. So you can have billing data and you can create an alarm which will then notify you using maybe SNS when your billing threshold has been reached. So CloudWatch sounds good. Trusted Advisor is more about sort of best practice guidance. CloudTrail is about auditing and QuickSight is coming up again and this is a business intelligence service. So CloudWatch sounds like the best answer to me. Let's just check that one out. And that is the correct answer. So you can monitor your billing metrics using CloudWatch. And by the way, billing metric data is always in the US East region. So US East North Virginia is the region you need to use to modify billing metric information. And you have to be logged in as root as well. And here is an example of a billing alarm. So this is one that I've got in my account that's just set up so that it will send me a notification when the threshold that I've configured is reached.